It was written a long time ago that Rob Appel loves to blend his love of the ocean with his love for textiles. Well, here you go. We have proof in this wonderful applique quilt for you. Now, what I want to talk about in today's video, as much as placing the pieces, is all of the fabulous batiks and colors and textures involved. Let's get started. That's right. Today's tutorial is all about my newest pattern and kit, the Black Tip Reef Shark, and this is all fusible applique. But what I really want you to focus on, especially our viewers today that are not following the pattern, but they just want to learn how I do these wonderful quilts, today is all about choosing fabrics, specifically batiks, that have the right colors and textures that do the work for us. So when you look down here at this wonderful Kaufman fabrics, um, let's just talk about what we're using and why we're using it before we talk about the pattern pieces. So. Real quick, you see here this beautiful, bright, vibrant blue. This will be the canvas or the background that everything lays on top of. So when I'm picking my fabrics first, I want everything, including my lightest, to have a real vibrant contrast uh, as it lifts off of the blue so that everything stands out as it would in the beautiful tropical waters, right? Then, and you've seen me use these fabrics lots because I love them, I'm choosing fabrics for the shark itself that are that one's for my reef, that are pretty neutral in their texture. They're going to have a bit of a watery effect, a wash over the top of them, but they really aren't going to have a lot of texture to them so that, as let's look at the quilt together, you look at the shark itself. The shark looks like it's in the water because of the textures, but you don't see a lot of different lines, so I don't have to worry about that in the design or in the quilting later on. But when we get into the reef, then it's all about textures. I'm choosing all kinds of wonderful things and thinking about not only the color, but where they're gonna be positioned in the reef. So this polka dot purple here that I just love, I chose that to be a base layer for all of our coral because it really looks like the coral does look like when you're underwater. So I'm using these polka dotty textures and that purple color as well as this all over mottling. So you see the darks and the lights in here. I really want those different saturations to come through so that I can place other fabrics on top. And like I said, that starts to do some of the work for me. And I don't have to make really, really accurate looking shapes. I'm just making kind of larger bulbous shapes at first. This is another fantastic background fabric. It looks like fireworks or it looks like sea urchins. And it really is fantastic on the way that it's gonna also be a nice base layer. And then I can layer other colors on top of it as well. This one is a similar texture. And this one here, you see that I've chosen some small dots and small circles working the same way I've tried to do with that purple dot. So I just want you seeing textures when you're looking at your batiks, if you're going through your own stash, look for stuff that has ah, a visual representation of where we're placing it in our quilt. And I'm gonna ask you to try to avoid things like a print that might have like a grape in it or a polar bear or something that would stand out as odd. A um, Couple last fun ones. Uh, this one was my <laughs> Maverick. This was my dicey choice right here. So it's geometric. But it also, for me, kind of represents light and darker holes in the caves, holes where they would be used in and out of the reef. So I used it partly in the reef, but I also used it as partly some of the highlights on my fish so I could pull out some of the yellows and oranges. So with that said, let's talk a little bit more about those pieces, those fish, that coral reef, that shark itself. Now, we have a pattern for you, and we also have a map. So if you're going to go on, on your own, you're just going to print out your map. And you can go ahead and create your pieces as you see. If you're going to do the pattern, of course, you have your pattern pieces, and those are going to be pre-traced onto your fusible web. My patterns are always created with the image already what we call flipped or transposed. Those are terms you're looking for when you're purchasing patterns. That means because we're doing it on a paper-backed fusible web that my pattern piece has already been switched, and that way you know that it will come out in the direction you see it behind me. So. That said, I want to show you how to cut the pieces with your shark apple cutter. Um, this is the wonderful little 14 millimeter rotary cutter I invented a couple years back and just love. The benefit of something like this is we're going to be able to cut right on the fused line here and I can start anywhere I want and I'm just putting a nice medium pressure down and I'm holding it like a pen. If you haven't seen me use this before, 
I've just got a wonderful little grip on that little turquoise squishy there, and then my finger's pushing down on the dorsal fin of the shark, and that's where this tool got its name, and that's why it's so fun to show it today in this video, of course. Now, in my pattern, the reason I saved this, I have this one little notch, and we're gonna come back to this later in the video, that helps us get some of the colors to twist in and out of each other. Watch this move. I'm gonna come backwards. It's easier to cut this backwards, and then I can come back here, and I'm gonna just gonna roll forward, and I'm just gonna cut this piece all the way out. Now, one of the really cool things about applique with fatigue fabrics like I'm showing you, and I'm just gonna talk while I cut for a few minutes, is that you can make your own shapes very, very easily. So as you're looking at the quilt behind me while I'm cutting this out, I want you to think that this is the basis for your creativity. And what you can really do is you can continue to add in new colors of fabric. You can add in more coral if you'd like. The shapes we're gonna create are really easy shapes that are designed to be used with your cutter like this but I'm also going to be using my scissors. Some of this stuff gets really small and really intricate, and that's the other trick. When you're using textured things, like the fabrics I was showing you a moment ago, what we were doing there is I was choosing large scale prints for the under layers, and then we'll be putting on lighter or smaller scale prints on the foreground or upper layers, and that works for both the texture and the colorization. Okay, if you're watching me cut here, one of the things I like to do on these bigger pieces is I just kind of nibble away at sections. And then on these nice long runs, I can go here. And that's where it's the benefit of actually having a rotary cutter in my fingers is I'm getting these beautiful smooth lines as we're working here. Now with fusible applique, the fusible web layer, this heat and bond feather light that I have, it also is like a fuse, it's a glue layer. And what it does is it works as a fray check. So anytime I might make a little bit of a bad cut, or I don't know if you saw me in those corners, I kind of overcut past the line. The benefit is, is this is gonna anchor down and those lines won't show up. And because the way we're gonna quilt this at the end and not wash it is really what I should tell you, <laughs> that we're not gonna have a problem with unraveling. And here we are, we're done. We're all but finished with this cut, coming into that tight little corner there. And perfect, so I've now cut out the very large piece. And like I was starting to say earlier, I've also cut out all of my other pieces and I just put them in bags or boxes or something like this just to keep them all uh, individually colorized. I should point out that I make sure I trace the numbers on the back of everything so I can see that. That's new, now the name of the piece. I'm gonna follow that as I put it together on the map. The last thing I wanna point out though is a lot of times for like the gills or some of the highlights on the fish and whatnot, I've got a lot of these little teeny pieces like this. Now, for me, it's easier to keep track of them and find them later in the bag as a big chunk. So I'll keep these set aside and then right when I'm ready to set them into the quilt on a small board off to the side, I'll cut these ones with the rotary cutter or sometimes those small ones with the scissors. That being said, let's start talking about layout on this beautiful thing. Now, I already have my fabric prepared. My background piece is a 40 inch by 30 inch piece. This is the color that's gonna show through here, right? I'm gonna make sure that my iron is getting nice and hot and my steam setting is turned off because I'm using the heat and bond. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to start thinking about building up my layers and I should show you, this is the map that we've got here as the printable for you. So this layer here, 11-1. There's my 11. That's gonna be this big base layer underneath there. So as I get ready to set this down before I put any of those other pieces, I'm just gonna go back here and I'm gonna peel off the paper. I'm looking for a corner where it's gonna release easily because what I wanna make sure that I see is I wanna make sure I see the glue on the back of the fabric. Now, Batik is a wonderful fabric because it's a higher thread count, it's more dense. And so as it being more dense there, it is gonna be less likely to unravel or fray as, we, as I cut as well. But I wanna make sure that I get the glue up to the edge. So right now I'm just peeling slowly. And a lot of this comes from just experience and working with the heat and bond and not uh, rushing 
the ironing process, meaning that I'm getting it bonded nicely on the first go about. And that's a perfect peel there. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. Now this piece itself is gonna drop on down here. And this is gonna be my base layer. I do not wanna iron anything until all of it is organized, all of it is designed, all of it is in the right location. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna run grab a cup of coffee on break and I'm gonna organize a bunch of pieces and show you how to put the fish and some of the coral together in one spot of this air, of the, the reef. I'm gonna build the whole reef out, press it down, and then we're gonna all do the shark together. I'll be right back. Welcome back from coffee break. I know I'm feeling wonderful and ready to get started about putting all the pieces down. Now, hopefully as you can see and understand, now what I've done is I've laid out all my pieces, kind of organized them by part number and by color number. Um, so it's easier for me to find them as I follow the map. I have already peeled the paper off of the big purple piece. It is my reef base. Um, my background is cut at 40 by 30 inches. I have about a quarter inch on either side that I'm cheating the difference just in case I need to trim down later on after the machine quilting. So we're just gonna leave that as part of the, the design. At this moment, this piece is not gonna change and everything's added to the top of it. Nothing slides behind it. So I'm gonna take my hot dry iron and I'm gonna give this a really good pressing. This is going to secure this permanently but also in thinking now, what I don't wanna do is over iron any of my other pieces. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do a lot of the rest of my work with my Clover Mini Iron. And I have that heating up as well right now, cause that's going to allow me to secure the big pieces in place without overheating this extra large base layer. So I'm taking a nice time to get this good and hot. And normally when working with applique, you've heard me say it a million times, don't slide your iron, but this is just one big piece. So I'm safe to slide it over here in the body, but I'm still pressing and lifting at the edges. And the other thing I wanna point out right now is this is almost too hot to the touch. And that's how I know it's really bonded really well. And that's perfect, just like that. Okay, so I've got that set for us. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my map and I'm going to start looking for my biggest pieces first. As I mentioned, each of them are numbered um, by their color family. That's the first number you see on the pattern piece. So here um, I'm looking for my 9-1 piece and I know that that's going to fit in right up in here. So I just take the paper, I begin peeling it off. And then I'm gonna drop it where I think it goes until the other pieces start to really help me form. So I can see it just kind of floating around about in the middle here. So I'm gonna assume it falls in this area, but watch how this comes together. Now, my other pieces I have um, over here is my eight one, and this is gonna go under my nine pieces in this one, and it basically starts in the corner. So this is that wonderful kind of sea urchin-y texture that I was showing you earlier. And it's darker, so I'm gonna lay it down and it's got a straight edge that lays about at the bottom here and I'm just looking at the corner gap. Then with this piece, what's really cool is then I go find my highlights of that nine uh, fabric again. And so like I'm gonna look for nine sixteen with my part numbers up, they're real easy to find this way. And I'm gonna start building out my reef. Now these pieces are not, well they should fit together nicely. I was gonna say they don't have to fit together perfectly because um, it really is a very micro scene of this big wonderful reef. So I'm gonna kind of put it in position as I see it here. I can adjust later on. That's why I have my stiletto and now we're not gonna iron anything until all of this scene comes together. I also know that my fish is gonna come in here. So as I start grabbing some of my parts and pieces, let's get this 15 in place as well. 15 here has another straight edge, so I know that that's gonna lay near the bottom. Right about in here. I also like to work with tweezers often, if that helps. And 14's gonna go in. And then this way I can start to put my fish in place, show you how she comes together.
And in the pattern piece, it shows where this piece lays in completely on top of the base layer. But you might have been able to see as that was starting to overlap, it also looked really cool. And that's what I'm trying to say, is if the pieces look cool where you set them, great. There's very few pieces that actually have to hide and bring things together, like the piece I'm going to show you right now, which is we're going to build this fish out, which consists of a few different fabric pieces. So I like to get them all ready at once, and then I'm going to organize them in position. So let's start with this big gray base piece. It happens to be numbered 7-1. Okay, this is a great moment too. I'm kind of struggling to get that loose. It did just come loose, but I don't know if you've seen, I'll also often poke in here with my stiletto, get in between and peel it off. So this is the nose of the fish and she's gonna hug in right along our coral down here. So now I can kind of position the base of her in that cutout of that piece that was there. Now I'm gonna get the yellow part peeled away. And there's gonna be a black strip that goes in between. So we're gonna get them pretty close and we're gonna let the black piece do the rest of the work for us. So now I'm going to position this here and let it kind of hug this line. Whoop. I want my fish on top of my coral. And then when you're doing something like this, it's a real detailed portion. That's something that your eye would pick up on. You do want to make sure your lines are going to match up. So I'm going to work for a little bit here. I'm going to bring this yellow in. I'm going to make sure that the black fits on both sides. So this is one of those intricate pieces that I want you to take your time with and get it just right so that your edges look sharp, just like that. And you can see now how the wonderful curve of the top of the fish, and that's what makes it look like it was a, a printed fish instead of uh, several pieces of fabric that's appliqued. Another little trick I'll point out here, a lot of the little pieces are so small. This was actually piece seven and eight, and I just didn't cut them apart at the bottom because of the way they're gonna fit in here for this little nose piece which is, I think, pretty clever, if you ask me. Okay, and this is gonna lay in here. And then I still need to add my little yellow circle in underneath the eye, and that is probably over here on the table. Oh, what a great grab. I pinched it and I actually pulled the paper off at the same time. So I want it, the yellow to slide under the black. Why would that matter to me as your designer friend? <laughs> what I'm doing for us here is I'm positioning that so that you don't have to sew on the yellow and the black. If the black holds the yellow, you only have to sew the black. And that's why I would make a decision like that when I'm drawing out my applique patterns. And then I'm just positioning this down here so that this little cutout gives the effect of the fin coming through there and it hugs this front line of this fish just like this. So now it's all in perfect location, but I'm gonna still build the rest of the reef because now I have other parts for perspective that I wanna lay in behind. So like this 9-1 form of like a little uh, polyp that would be above here. This piece sits just underneath my fish so I'm putting a little pressure on the back side of my applique pieces as I slide that down. And then I also happen to know that I've got a couple of tiny little color pieces that will fit in for all of my detail. So if you've never done an applique quilt before, you might be thinking one of two things. One is, wow, that sure looks like a lot of work. But most of you are probably thinking, wow, that sure looks like a lot of fun. Because us applique quilt makers are often those people that love to put puzzles and things together. So the benefit of an applique quilt is you get to just follow the instructions and lay in all these pieces as we've designed it when you're following a pattern. But I'm also trying to teach you how I make these pieces so you can create your own or add some of your own so you get to be creative because that's one of the things I like about not following a pattern. So they're really, really fun, 
But the key to success is not going too fast. If you've watched my other videos, you know I'm usually all over the place going crazy. And look how much time and detail, and I just love it. It's like doing a fine piece of art. I really enjoy this process. So I'm gonna keep working each little piece. Let's talk about this next section here where we're coming together. This is another one of these layering tricks I wanna teach you real quick. So I'm bringing down this yellow, and I have a piece that goes under and a piece that goes over to bring all the colors together at once. So first we're gonna get the paper off of this here. And I'm gonna kinda of drop it in what will be somewhat location. Looking at my map, I know that I have this fish called a wrasse that fits in up here and it happens to be this cutout. So right now I'm getting close to location, but I also need to drop in this other piece, which is kind of a very generic piece that's gonna fit in there, but that colorizes everything for us. That's really cool. So this will slide now underneath here. And the detail, it all comes back together. And I want you to leave blue in this opening because that wrasse fish is usually blue, purple, yellow, and black. And the blue we're gonna use is just the same blue of our ocean because that's the awesomeness of the coral reef is so much of it is a camouflage trick that's happening. So as I move this around, I position this around, I'm simply looking to make sure that my cream color in here fills in my yellow right now, but doesn't fill in my blue up here of my RAS. The other thing that's going to fall into this position right here very soon will be like one of these fish right here. As a matter of fact, I can show you how I've done those. But before we jump into those, I guess I want to finish that RAS. I get so excited about all these little ideas I want to teach us today. Watch this piece come in here. I've already peeled the paper off of it because I won't forget which this one is. And what this is gonna do when I said you have an under and an over, when this piece lays in here like this, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide it a little bit to try to get some of this purple of the reef popping in where the tail is. And I'm holding my breath. I might turn in purple. Let's use the tweezers for this. There we go. And that's how it's supposed to look. We have the stripes of black through the blue and you've got the yellow and then I can grab this underneath here and shift around a little bit as I need. And then one of these fish here I was just starting to talk about, I already had the paper on the back. I'm gonna show you how I did this trick, but look at this. So the stripes are already built into it. And so what I've done there is I hit it with the little clover iron while the paper was still on the back so that I can peel this fish off and then that fish will drop in there hiding that little spot or that little gap that was there. So we've got lots more pieces to build into the reef here, but I wanted to show you how I did that fish trick again, because it's really cool. And when we're working with a lot of these small pieces, this is really key. So the reminder is, and this is the trick to it, is do not take the paper off of the base layer because it's gonna capture everything. And then what I do is I actually cut my pieces out. Remember when I said I don't cut them until I'm ready? So I started cutting those and I realized, oh, I wanna show you all that. So now I've cut 46, 45, 44. I'm going to cut 43, lay it in order. Paper's still on in case I were to drop these. I need to know what number they are. And I put them in order so it'll be easier to reassemble the fish. Oop. <laughs> and these small ones I still find are just as easy for me to do with the scissors. Of course, you could try to do them with your rotary cutter. And then just to make it really fun, I've got a teeny little hole in there, so I just cut through the side because I can't even get in there in the middle. I'm gonna nibble out a little bit of section in there for the eyeball, which you can see on the fish itself looks really cool. But while you're trying to cut it, you might think, boy, that Rob is pretty crazy. And I might be kind of crazy, but I sure love doing what I do. And the last time I checked, you're all loving it out there. So I appreciate you letting me be crazy. That didn't sound too crazy, did it? <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so now I've got that piece trimmed away and I'm ready to start peeling the paper off. I'm just gonna get my tweezers involved already. And then what I do is I bring it in. So I've got my position as I need and then I'm just gonna peel the paper off as I go. 
Sometimes if I bend it with the tweezer, that makes life even easier. And I think I put my eye in upside down. Let's flip that around. That's what I was looking for. Some of your fish will be swimming on the reef. So you want to use your fish as your highlights. These will go down last. I just wanted you to learn how to do this trick. Some of your fish will be swimming up in the ocean or the open water. So we can position those later on. We need to build out all of our reef though before we put any other pieces down or iron anything down completely. So that's why this works so nicely with our fish here because I'm just securing them. Oop, that one flipped over. And you just want to make sure it looks the way you want it to look. And then what I do is I use my Clover Mini and I'm going to iron it down. Now I have batting already. My ironing board is already underneath my fantastic ocean fabric here. The ironing board itself is made out of one of those pieces of one inch thick insulation that you can get at the hardware stores. And then it has been wrapped in some batting so that I can iron on it and stick to it. And that works fantastic. I want to keep building a little bit more of this before I jump into caffeinated mode and finish out the rest of the reef because I just want you to see and get the real feel with the way that some of these other pieces are going to lay down because I've used some of the fabrics as highlights and then sometimes I've used them as shadows as well. So coming back up in here to this top section, I've got this piece number 6-2 in my hand. And this is going to fill in along this top yellow line here. So it's going to go underneath the yellow, and this is why we don't press anything down, and you wanted to when you saw that RAS come together, but you didn't need to. We're still good like this. I'm just going to shift that down like that. And then this is the other piece right here. So there's a lot of contour in these cut lines. If I'm going to make you cut that hard, work that, all, that much effort into your cutting pieces, then I want that to sit on top so that the colors come together. So I want to at least get this piece in play so you can see how it really works on top of the orange print. And it takes away a lot of these large chunks that you see of the hexagons. And so it doesn't look so geometric. It looks really cool in our reef. Okay, I'm just going to slide this down a little bit. If I remember, that's how it went. And then this piece here, these textures are going to fill in along here so I can see that that fish needs to be removed. And that's a good thing because as I look back at my map, I can see that the fish was actually on top of this coral the whole time. Some of these little skinny parts like this are going to try to twist around and move on me. What am I doing here? There it is. Perfect. So I want this to come underneath this here. And that covered in that hole down there. So it's a little bit of an under over game. Under over, under over. You remember that from our grade school days. And then look at this. Isn't that awesome how that comes together? Now I want to point out, I've positioned the white where it goes. Now I can come in here by holding this. I can move the orange around because what I don't want is any of these. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a blue gap showing in there right now. And that would be like a cave that isn't supposed to exist there. So we want to make sure everything fits down together. And then you can always come back in and I can see that I even have a couple of other these cream color pieces that are going to fill in that edge too. So I've got this nice and flat here again, building my base layer so that I can come back in and I can really start to fill in the rest of the coral reef. So why don't I do that? Why don't I get a bunch more of the pieces in so that you can see where we're at and then we'll finish off with the shark today. I'll be right back.
And again, welcome back. You can see that I have all of the pieces of the coral reef, the fish, all the little detail, highlights, shadows, everything in place. Now we're ready to iron. So let's talk about a couple different ironing strategies I'm gonna make. First of all, I've got my iron good and hot over here. It's a dry iron because I'm using heat and bond feather light. And in this section over here, because I don't have any little intricate fish or a little any under overlapping pieces that are real crucial, I can come in here and I can just press and lift. And it's about three seconds with my dry iron. So I am now securing all of these applique pieces here. And I'm gonna keep doing this like this and working my way in one direction. Now coming back up from where I've already pressed in the other direction up into some of these wonderful little like feather duster corals and little tube worm heads and all these wonderful things that we find on the reef. And this is all bonding down beautifully. Again, so hot that I don't really want to touch it with my bare hand and I've got a little bit of pressure and that's putting it all in place like this. But then when I get into my other section of the reef, where I've got all these intricate little pieces, I really want to use my Clover Mini Iron to set a lot of these pieces as I go. So as I come across here, I've got this big piece, and I'm watching, and I'm watching to make things sure things aren't moving around. But then as I get into the more intricate spots, I really want to anchor and secure with my little Mini Iron. So this has been nice and hot for a while. I want to keep working in the same area I've been working in so I'm gonna come in here now and I'm gonna heat up these sections. A lot of my fish have highlights on them. So I can come in here like this, there's a little highlight on this fish. And your mini iron is gonna be real hot, but it also will start to cool quickly. So anytime it starts to feel like it's cooling down, you wanna let it build back up. And while I'm doing that, I'm always using my eye and I'm going around and I'm making sure that everything is right where I want it. A couple of these little crucial pieces I don't want to move anymore. You might have even seen I actually pressed that one while I was building out the reef because I didn't want it to move. All those pieces were so sensitive and small there. So I can come down here and I can anchor and then what I'm going to do after it's anchored, I'm going to do one last final pressing with my big iron to apply that final amount of heat and pressure I need. So the Clover Mini Iron is bonding the glues to the surface layers of each other, not really necessarily bonding it all the way to the background layer. I can also move little pieces if I need slightly as I'm working with the Mini Iron. That's one of the reasons I love it so much. So I'm hitting my sensitive pieces, I'll hold this fish where he goes, make sure I get all these highlights down on the fish. Just like that. Let's get this guy secured. These parts secure here, making sure this fish is always on top of all the other pieces because this fish is swimming closest to you. You wanna make sure there's no coral in front of it. And then once all of those major pieces like that have been secured, then in the same area I had been working, I'm coming back in here with the big iron and I'm really pressing these down nice. And I'm gonna get all of this done so that while I'm working on my shark pieces, nothing is moving and the shark will sit on top of all of this or not touch any of this. So none of this is dependent upon the shark. When you're looking at any other applique piece or applique pattern, I should say, I wanna make sure that I'm always evaluating the entire design and making sure I don't ever press things down before all of the stuff in that area is in place so that you don't have to try to fit things in behind something else. That's very challenging. Okay, I think we're completely secure here. Feels great, obviously, looks wonderful. I'm really happy with my layout. At this point, if you wanted to add any of your extra little characters, use your scraps from the leftover pieces, you could build your reef up more, but it's time to dive in and get our shark done. So I'm gonna slide this just slightly down so it's a little easier for me to reach the middle. The shark itself is gonna build into this big part up in here, and the first thing I want is my biggest piece 
to come into place here like this. And a little hard to tell, but this piece is a highlight that goes into the, one of the fins. So this is going to run all the way out and through there. So that's an up position right now. That's one of our little layout pieces. Let's get this cut off of here, paper peeled. We're going to try to get this as close as possible to location. So the body of the shark is actually swimming slightly up this light body part. So I'm going to have a little bit of an upward motion. And then I'm looking at this edge here and I'm comparing it to my map just for perspective. And this is going to point a little bit more towards the upper corner. So I'm hoping this is about the right location for this. Of course, we can move it all around, but we're going to have to scoop pieces because I've already peeled the paper off the back. Okay, so then from there, I'm going to get all my pieces I had in my bags, and I should probably have these out and organized and ready to go. And the next big piece I'm looking for is going to be this one here from color number three, three number one. And this is going to wrap around the top and bottom of this highlight center body of the shark. And now you can see as I'm dragging my fabric over the top of my reef, you now know exactly why my reef has been already set in place completely. So I'm not worried at all about moving any of that stuff, just like it's part of the background now. The heat and bond won't stick to itself much, but you saw there, if it was a much warmer day, I could have been in trouble. So do be careful while you're peeling your papers off. Okay, and now I'm looking for this zone here. This part, if I remember correctly, goes up. This part's going to kind of hug back in here around. Oh, there's another little piece that fits in there. And this is one of those pieces I wanted to show you earlier that's real important. So this I'm going to hug around the tail. Oops, that's where it is. That part's the tail. I knew it didn't quite look right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little under over game again here in a second. So I'm just positioning all of this. We'll probably have to move some of these slightly. So I'm looking that little bump there bumps in. This pulls right up to the nose of the shark here. I also like to do kind of this patting and sliding motion. What we need though is we need this highlight to be on the up. So that's why there's this cut in here. It goes just like this. Perfect. Look at that. Okay. Then it comes back out over here. That was that funny little piece I was cutting earlier. So if you have to make any scissor adjustments to that, you certainly can to make sure that these pieces all fit together so nice. So that's one of those key elements. You see how that brings them both together top and bottom? You should have a little bit of an overlap. Just a reminder, this was the really important part for me to make sure that you could see where this light part came out on top of the dark part, but the dark is on the rest of this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the rest of the pieces in place on the shark and talk you through the final pieces of that and then the machine quilting. I'll be right back. All right, fantastic. Here we are in the last moments of setting the pieces into place on my reef shark. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just adjusting any of the underlaying pieces because what I don't want is any blue from the background to show up in the body at all. It just won't belong there in our art piece. Once everything is just as I like it, just like on the bottom of our reef, I'm going to use my big, hot, heavy iron and press everything down. You could also come back in and later with your gill points or your eyeball pieces, and you could press those in with your clover mini iron, but I already have mine positioned, which means I will iron them straight down and lift to make sure that everything's perfect. Once everything's secured, then you're going to go ahead and put down your backing and your batting. Um, excuse me, I forgot to mention, we're going to put on our wonderful interior and exterior borders. Then we're going to cut our backing and then we're going to cut our batting and make sure everything's all set and basted and follow me to the quilt. I'm going to talk about the machine quilting. Now, when we do machine quilting, we want to start in the center of our project. So even though I had all these detailed pieces down in the reef, I started about here on the shark 
and then I came around the shark parts. There were several places like in the tail where, because I'm using the black thread and I'm using a polyester thread for this because of the fusible applique, I was able to go in and out of all of the different little black and gray pieces within the tail to hold all those down. Then you're going to go around the whole body of the shark itself first. Once the shark was secured at this area, I was able to jump down into the reef and then I began filling in the reef parts. I actually used an orange and yellow variegated thread for most of the work. I put in a little bit of black thread and I went around the fish. And once everything applique wise was secured, then the last we need to do is we just come back in with our blue thread and we're doing kind of a watery motion back and forth. And I even snuck some circles or bubbles into my ocean there that is working to bring together the entire story of this awesome predator, our black tip reef shark. So lots of wonderful information today on how to assemble if you're following the pattern. I also hope you were able to pull a lot of great information if you're building your own applique patterns on how to choose your batik fabrics, how to pick those fantastic colors and textures that do a lot of the work for you so that you can just enjoy spending your time putting together your pieces of your favorite patterns. And as a matter of fact, you know how much I love these applique patterns. So in the comments below today, I want to hear from all of you. What's the next pattern I should start working on right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.